I'm assuming under the new mech laws, new changes that that person would be able to put in the 70, but for a much longer period of time because there's more mech space, uh, which would allow them to do that. That's, that's correct. So what you've got there is the same death benefit gets you more mech space on a life insurance policy. So it does have a relationship to the guarantees as well to provide a little bit more information there. For example, today, still with a 4% guaranteed rate, how it works is if you have an age 40 male with a 4% guarantee, you would need almost exactly $2.8 million in total death benefit to get, call it a $100,000 MEC limit. Does that part make sense? Correct. Let me write that out. So yep. say it one more time. Yep. So if you've got a age 40 male, $2.8 million in total life insurance gives you a $100,000 MEC limit. And that is based on a 4% guarantee. Right. So that's current design. Correct, based on current current MEC laws. Mm -hmm. So in order to put yeah. in 100 grand, that 40 year old male would need to qualify for 2.8 million of death benefit. They would need to show roughly how much in income per year. Um, to get a $2.8 million death benefit, you need about 60 to $70,000 in annual income to qualify for that. Really, that's it? So a 30X multiplier at age 40 you would get. So if you're 70K, per year times 30 would give you the, uh, it'd be 21, I'm sorry. So it'd be about, um, what are the, 90,000, I'm sorry. Got it, and if they're putting in 100 grand, does the insurance company, you know, in terms of the actual financial capability, if they're only making 100 grand a year, would the insurance company like, look at that like- Shut it down? Yeah. Yeah, would they shut it down? So it depends on the situation. Um, a lot of times in that particular case where someone's putting in more money than what they're earning. Usually they've got funds, whether they sold a piece of property, they received an inheritance, like they've got a lump sum or access to cash. That's usually where we run into those type of issues. Okay, so what would be like a realistic income, mm -hmm. just based off income, not assets, mm -hmm. for someone to be able to realistically afford to pay in a hundred grand a year? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I mean, it will depend on their, their situation, I mean, Typically what'll happen, I kind of see where you're going here, based on their income, they're usually going to qualify for the total death benefit needed, but where this, and the visuals will help here, where this becomes advantageous is if you stick to the age 40 male with the $2.8 million death benefit, and you wanted to pay in, kind of like you mentioned earlier, 100K per year for 15 years, and you wanted to use Guardian, for example, that's where you would have to have a higher death benefit, might right. be four million or so, which you might not qualify for based on your income. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Does it. that make sense? Yeah, that, that makes sense. I think the in and at any point in time, guys, for those that are listening, comment below if you're like, what, you know, repeat that, and we'll keep honing yeah. in on it, pack it different ways so that it's it's very very clear. So this is current design and yeah. individual you know, insurance companies are going to look at that income to determine or, or qualify just because they qualify for the high death benefit, but they're looking to put in this amount in cash that that might get them a little uh, questioning that model. Now, one mm -hmm. one thing that I think I've heard other insurance agents use in the past and, and um, one in particular, our, our, our friend of ours, uh, Jerry Feta says uh you know 25 percent of your income is is a, is a solid number to put into life insurance or what an individual would qualify for mm -hmm. how accurate is is that is that like a safe thing to say when a client says well what is the max amount of money i can put into a policy according to my, my yeah. income and age what is that yeah like? that's a good question so that typically has to do with the total scheduled premium so if you're scheduling premium and or PUA payments, that is what the insurance company is going to say, okay, here's what the client is committing themselves to. So for example, is my screen still crooked or did the change fix it? No, it's still crooked. No. Ah, I love it. So I'm not, I can't write backwards. Sorry, Tim. Um, so if I earn a hundred thousand dollars, for example, um, and I am committing, I want to commit to a certain payment, the maximum an insurance company will typically be comfortable with would be 
So that'd be $25,000 in that case. Now, with that said, there's a very easy workaround to that. And this is where PUA flexibility comes into play. Whatever I'm committed to, whether it's premium or PUA payments, that's where a company is going to say 25% income is the absolute max. Mm. Some states like, like New York state prefer a 15% max of, of annual earned income. With that said, a workaround there is with an unscheduled PUA rider. Got it. Mm -hmm. So an unscheduled PUA rider is unscheduled. A policyholder can make the payment if they want to, they don't have to. That's often where an individual will say, okay, like I earn $100,000 per year. I may commit to, if it's 25,000, maybe it's only 10,000, whatever I'm comfortable with. And then at my discretion, I'll add additional funds into PUAs based on my cash flow, based on my situation. And that piece is not scrutinized or underwritten by the insurance company because it's up to the policyholder. They may add it, they might not add it. It's in their control and based on their non-committed finances, if that makes sense. Got it, which there was a case where I, uh, I, I, I remember this off the top of my head. I have a client that she designed a policy putting in 40,000 a year but her income per month is somewhere around 5,500, I think 6K max is her income. And she designed a policy putting in 40K a year, base premium is 4,000, went with Guardian, and then has unscheduled PUA payments where she basically uh, works to get to the 40K amount, working off of just 5,500, 6K. And income which i found very interesting i mean I, when i was working i was like look you know this isn't exactly the easiest thing in the world to do so let's just keep in mind that if we don't get there we don't beat ourselves up but the nice part is you've you totally maximized the total amount of money you could stuff into one policy and whether you do that each year or over time you've got that flexibility to to right. do so and so mm -hmm. that's with current design and her death benefit you know is is higher under the new design what does that look like yeah so that's where the guaranteed rate will actually have an impact on the new mech limit as well so i'll walk you through this slowly so with the old one that 40 year old male 2.8 million dollar death benefit with a four percent guarantee gives you a mech limit of 100k if a new company and product has a guaranteed rate of 3%, what that would result in, you would only need just north of $2 million. The exact number is $2,050,000 with a 3% guarantee, gives you the same $100,000 MEC limit. New MEC laws, so let's do that one more time. 40 year old male, same amount. Yep. And what was that uh, new $2,050,000 million, $2 million gives you a $100,000 MEC limit if the product has a 3% guarantee. Okay. So that's $750,000 less in death benefit. Correct. Therefore, to your same point amount, earlier. Right. Mm -hmm. For the same amount of funding. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. If you have a 2% guarantee, then you need, it's about a 1.45, we'll call it a $1.5 million death benefit. It's a little bit less, but let's round 1.5 million for the same $100,000 MEC limit. If it's a 2% floor, okay. Correct. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So now, if I'm dealing with someone that really cares about the death benefit, right? Because that's not typically the case when we're working with our clientele, they're more concerned about the cash value growth right? Mm -hmm. and, and the starting cash value, the liquidity in it. But let's say I'm dealing with someone that wants more death benefit. Um, under the new MEC laws, this would be not advantageous to someone that really cares about the death benefit. Would it be wise to, you know, if they're looking at infinite banking and they're like, okay, this is great, but I still want some more death benefit just for that protection. Would you then say, 
um, go yeah. buy some term. Um, you could do that, right? So if you're getting that a healthy for thing to do, you know, you, you could, or if you really like the death benefit and the cash value, I mean, that's where the old one, I mean, hands down makes more sense in that respect. Okay. Right. Simply because if you can get the same mech limit of 100K, similar cash value performance from a non guaranteed standpoint, but stronger guarantee, but a higher death benefit. If the death benefit's important, the old one hands down makes more sense. Or to your point, if you like the new one or you got in too late, then you could layer it with term as well. Got it. Got it.